Wednesday meets Tombstone in this big-budget summer popcorn movie. Hello there everyone, I'm movie critic Nick Yakabuchi, as always for RealScreenReviews.com and our next movie review is The Adventure Cowboys and Aliens. This special effects western fantasy, that's four words I'd never thought I'd say in a row, opened in the middle of the summer movie season on Friday, July 29, 2011, and it stars Daniel Craig, Harrison Ford, Olivia Wilde, Sam Rockwell, Walton Goggins, and Clancy Brown. Cowboys and Aliens comes to us from the very versatile and talented writer, producer, actor, director John Farbru, writer and star of Swingers with Vince Vaughn, and the director of Elf, Zathura, and the Iron Man movies. This time out, he combines a good old-fashioned western with the high-tech effects of Hollywood in an attempt to turn out something as fun and entertaining as Robert Downey Jr. in a suit of armor. This tale tells us of the town of Absolution in the Arizona Territory circa 1873. Daniel Craig stars as a secretive cowboy suffering from amnesia that stumbles into this rough town known for its fair share of trouble. Harrison Ford's Colonel Dollarhide seems to rule this town of absolution with a very tight grip, and he doesn't like strangers and neither do the townspeople. They must, however, learn to put their differences aside when unidentified and mysterious crafts begin to invade our world, and they haven't come to make nice. As the tale progresses, not only will our hero begin to recall who he is, that seems to be directly related with how these creatures can be bested. Now, adding to the mystery and fun is Ella, portrayed by Olivia Wilde, and she too brings adventure to a tale that builds and builds to a climax that will see all involved standing together against one common nemesis. Well, people, this film is better than average, and it is better than average for one main reason, and that would be the natural intensity of lead actor Daniel Craig. His eyes and his stare seemed to pierce right through you, and I couldn't believe how much he reminded me of the great Yul Brenner in this movie. In the cowboy hat, he even kind of resembled him from The Magnificent Seven. Daniel Craig so radiates the strong and silent type, and it really seems to me that the less the man says, the more he gets his point across. Also, Harrison Ford picks up right where he left off in the wonderful Morning Glory, once again bringing a mean, grumpy and difficult personality to the big screen. Even though his Colonel Dollarhide isn't very nice, what is nice is seeing him still actively challenge himself as an actor instead of playing the same old part again and again. Then Olivia Wilde is not only one of the most beautiful women in Hollywood, I have always thought of her to be much more than a pretty face. Now, unfortunately, I think that she was only in this film to have a female character in there somewhere, but with her, Sam Rockwell, Keith Carradine, and a slew of other quality, talented actors in front of the camera, well, that didn't hurt this film in any way either. Why not the Old West? You know, no reason. Aliens could just as easily attack present day as 13th century England or France, or even the caveman era, for that matter. One of the better compliments that I can pay cowboys and aliens is that it's completely original. The first half completely feels true and authentic to a western, and then when the aliens show up, the action and effects seem to accompany the movie without so much as the blink of an eye. Then director John Favreau stepped up the drama and seriousness from the two previous Iron Man films. The movie I thought was very graphic in spots for a PG-13 feature, and not only did I really think that he was restraining from the violence in the first place, many of the film's characters meet their demise along the way. Now, the only part of the movie that feels like a retread is the same overlooked backstory of these aliens that are here for no other reason than to soak up our planet's natural resources. Also, you know the us-against-them theory will come into play right after all of the differences are cast aside so that we can stand together and fight as one. At just shy of two hours, Cowboys and Aliens isn't a great film, but it's one of the more fun times that I had watching a movie this summer. I could have used a little more of the alien background, among other things. However, the first time that I looked at my watch, there was only about 15 minutes left in the feature, and that's always a good sign. In the end, I think that the scenes with Daniel Craig are worth the price of admission alone. The effects are good, the story is original, and the movie is entertaining. A very generous, but still three stars out of four. And remember, people, I'm not always right, but only when it comes to the movies. And thank you very much for your attention.